The moment that we've been waiting for, right? Because this is match point. If Onyx are able to get one more point away from Burnex Flash, that's them winning the entirety of the series. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the draft of game number two. Looking at the movement just now as well, I just love Atlas striding the MSE skin in the middle you just now. Onyx as the first pick, they banned out the Lancelot, man. You gotta respect this. Burnix Flash still banning out the Fanny, and Onyx banning out the... Still, Burnix Flash banning out the 1-1. One -one. I just love this Lancelot ban because back in Malaysia, even Milo said that the Lancelot is the changes of the jungle there might be there might be cases where it's get it's get banned out and we see it here in game number one even <laughs> onyx is banning out the last slot hey look they diggy also banned the diggy out right they finally understand it cold. yeah you know what our competition even keyboy's face is like yeah you know what we need I'm, to get out I, i'm okay with banning out the diggy <laughs> oh man but the atlas i'm worried about the atlas here last time novaria was the last ban mm -hmm. that should actually force them to do that but if that's the case then onyx they're going to be able to pick that Atlas first pick if they want to. Do they want to let the Kadita go though? The Kaja go as well? I think I think Keyboy has so much that he can use yeah. that he could probably see the entire lineup first and be like, you know what? Never mind. I have a hero that even you guys haven't thought about. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say it. I haven't thought about it yet. Not our own. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Keyboy is a... He's transition. He's not a Keyboy anymore. He's a Key Man. Burnix Flash, the final ban. It's going to be the Kaja. So stop letting it. the Atlas go, I will not stop it. Novaria. And Novaria. That's going to be first pick. Sure. Like we mentioned, man, in the patch note segment earlier, Novaria has shifted the prior levels in the game. And when it's open, better first pick it. It's just... It's it's built in map hacks, LaFell. I don't know how it can get better than that. Oh, we do have a quote here. From Kyrie, I think even from Onyx Philippines, Coach Yeb is the best coach he has had since, oh wait, until Onyx ID, and he doesn't think that it would have changed. He's still doing a lot of good things, and he's very impactful for the team. Kyrie saying good we things. We can feel that, though. Back to back, yeah. M3 Grand Finals, yeah. But I mean. and it's not just the knowledge that Coach Yeb brings to the table, right? Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he's able to give the team just morale. balance, right? Morale. And he's honestly a positive guy. He has a second name. Huh? Coach Yeb is the first one. Uh -huh. Coach Yes is the second one. <laughs> he brings positivity to the team. He brings comfort. Everyone feels relaxed, but at the same time, super motivated. Looking back into the draft here, Burning Splash picking up the Eve as well as the Fredrin. Novaria, we really do have to see the impact here because based on our own personal testings, number one, damage, amazing. Honestly, very, very great. Amazing range as well. But again, the alt providing so much utility, not, not only just giving vision, but actually making it so much easier to hit your skill shots. If you're already hitting a lot of your Beatrix, you're going to hit a lot more after this. And Definitely. on top of that, it also cancels recall. So yeah, really yeah, that's for buying time as well. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, you don't even need your ult to open up. You can use your first skill. There's and so, your second many, skill. so many enablers here. Uh, a lot of Heroes can be enabled by the Navaria, and with that, they actually go for the Clan and Yuzong. Zong. So we were talking about Beatrix and a lot of the skill no, shot heroes that definitely will benefit oh. from that, but this is a scary pick. This is the pick that we spoke about earlier. Donut has an 80% win rate. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, good and bad. The Claude is good going up against the Eve. Amazing. Yes. Leslie is good going up against the Claude. Yes. But this is a 5v5, not a 1v1, because looking at the situation right now, the Yuzong, yes. if the Yuzong can get on top of that Leslie and actually forcing the Leslie to hit the, the dragon, the black dragon form coming in from the Yuzong, there's a lot of interactions here happening. So Donut picking up the Leslie is actually very brave. We got to see if it really works out in this game. Yeah, I think they need a little bit more frontline, honestly, here. And Onik, with that in mind, right, they're going to wow. go straight for the Uranus ban. It Here's just shows how much they know about the Uranus, right? It worked for them. Maybe no other team has picked it up, Dude, but... The damage buff, it, it means a lot. Exactly. And with that, they will respect the hero that they were able to utilize to win game number one. And like you mentioned, LaFell, this Leslie is going to be in a bit of trouble. And that's why Burnix Flash are doubling down on the fact that, you know, no assassins for Kyrie. You know, get him off of the assassins. This time especially. With the Leslie, you're not as, uh, you know, sustainable. You can't really survive a lot of these dive. So Haya and maybe, maybe, do they want to take the Ling out here? I honestly feel like it's not a bad pick to ban out, mm -hmm. honestly. Like, even even if you lose the fight, there is an option <laughs> for you to spin. Oh, I forgot about the Kadida, yeah. Kadida Yuzong was what...
destroyed the Leslie at oh, ISF. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's very true. Now so looking. still going to be the respect. Yeah, definitely. Look. And now we're going to see what Onik goes for here, right? They've already limited Uranus here from the front line, trying to eliminate any presence that perhaps could give Onik a bit of a hard time, especially in that front line. Are they going to go for that again? Or... Do they want to go for something else here, right? It seems like they haven't picked up a roamer. Maybe an Atlas ban could come through from Onik. But um, the same thing can be said for Burnex Flash, honestly. No, I'm thinking of like, okay, definitely didn't think about a Franco ban coming in here for the side. It's actually of good. It's actually good. Yuzong doesn't like Franco. Definitely. Claude like, doesn't like Franco. Bloody Hunt. Always. I don't like Franco. Why? I thought you were a roamer. Yeah, and I always get picked off by the Franco. That's Stop it. It's, it's annoying. Personal experience. I agree. I agree. Especially when it's on the hands of someone like D7 who can actually use oh, it, yeah. right? If, oh, yeah. uh, but Burnix Flash, remember, with the Diggy Band, they can still go for something like an Atlas here. But it is a bit too risky knowing that Claude can go for Purify. Novaria can also join in with that Purify. Uh, he doesn't even need Purify. He plays all the way to the back. You want to go for the Joy. A joy hero that can wow. dive. And in this particular situation, it's still flex. It's still yeah. great for Burnix Flash. But the Joy can go jungle. And the but, Joy can go XP. But Joy's early game has been weakened a lot. Joy? So? The Joy? Some people might not matter. It's Some like people might not matter. <laughs> Some people might not care. That's the <laughs> that's the correct word. Uh -oh. Some people might not care. Uh -oh. I heard the uh-oh. What's the uh-oh about? The joy sets up perfectly for what Onik might be planning. And what are they planning? You know, Navari is cool and all, but it's just not it doesn't scream keyboy. You know what does? What does scream keyboy? Kufra. Oh yeah. Actually the Kufra is good against the Leslie as well. Yeah, exactly. Some more dive into the back. They can go for an assassin as well with some but that's the thing. They can't go for assassins, I feel like, if they go for the Kufra, because that mid control is definitely mountain. going. Oh, there you go. Wow. It's a Cho. Okay, Cho even more keyboard. Balvin, man. I said Kufra? No, Cho. Dude, now, uh, honestly, the buffs. On it can go for a snowball because the buffs on the Balmain is insane. Is insane. It's Here's broken. the thing if you build damage, that's amazing now. There it is. Look at the changes. Little counter before this is just 400 plus 60% total physical attack, 20 to 30% of the enemy's large HP. Now, sure, the total physical attack has been dropped to 150 plus 70%. But the lost HP, it will plus from 30%. If you are level 12, it will go up to 45% of the enemy's lost HP. So for now, you build full tank, you will do so well, especially looking at how squishy Burnex Flash composition is. Oh, I want to see the last pick coming in from Burnex Flash, and it's going to be the Kufra. Okay, so now that you see, what do you feel? Because you wanted to see it, now you see it. I see it. All right. What do you think about the Kufra? I don't think it's a bad choice, honestly. I mean, they needed more CC in their composition, and that's definitely the CC that you can utilize. But I'm not really sure if the Kufra is going to be reliable to pick things off for the composition that Onik has brought. Yeah, very mobile, a lot of range. They can keep on, you know, like they have Novaria. the Claude. Novaria is going to be playing all the way back. But looking at the composition, there's no other hero they can really go for who can catch the Navaria as good as Kufra, right? Maybe the Cho with a flicker, but Kufra has a very good gap closer, and that's maybe what they're looking for here. Um, I want to say that Onik have just learned from their mistakes. Guess what? When they picked Leslie at M4, guess who bonked them in their face? Who bonked them on their face? Yaoi on the Cho. Yaoi on the Cho? <laughs> <laughs> the Cho. Yaoi on the Cho? Into a Leslie. Oh, dude, but now listening to the crowd cheering and roaring, game number two, we already see the flashes, and looks like we're going to game number two of MSC 2023. On it going up against Burnex Flash. This is possibly the last game for Onik, but if Burnex Flash wants to continue, they gotta win this one. They definitely do. And taking a look at these lanes, right? I mean, I understand, right? Leslie does good against the Claude based on range, but early game Leslie. I think she needs a little bit more time to le level things up, have the damage that she's meant to have. Yeah, against everyone else, sure. Against Claude? No, Claude just doesn't do anything in lane against the Leslie. You can expect the Cho, Keyboy, to always be top lane if they want CW to be, you know, a yeah. factor in the game. Plus, honestly, the real reason why Leslie is so good going up against the Claude because the play style of a Claude is you want to battle mirror, battle mirror image in, blazing duet, and usually you'll be using a win of nature. Going up against a Leslie that does true damage, the win of nature is a non-factor. 
Also, the cancel from that second skill. Donut can cancel the Blazing Duet. That is a big, big mechanic that Burning Splash will try to utilize in these skirmishes. And again, you can already see as well the range. That's, I think, the number one thing for Burn X Flash. And if you take a look at the emblems once again, you can see that it's actually just pretty normal. Yeah, everything's pretty normal. And we were talking about normally it's a 1v1 lane. Even Donut's like, yeah, I can 1v1 CW. They're not letting it happen. Both teams are going for a 2v2 lane up here in the gold. And it's all about the millioners jumping oh. on. But D7 catches Sans. But Sans is still able to get away because not enough damage yet to take him down. Yeah, this is really different to what we saw in game number one, right? A lot more emphasis on the gold lane for sure. And the fact that Sans can actually mobilize around the map a lot quicker than Seacat actually might be the answer or a little bit of an edge that Onyx does have here from the mid lane. Because with the mid lane control, they're going to be able to rotate a lot faster. But now, emphasis onto the next neutral objective. Once again, Burnex Flash going to be the first one there. Doesn't look like Onyx wants to contest. Yeah, mid control held down by Burnex Flash. The fact that they also were able to translate that over to XP is good. Keyboy jumps in though. Yeah, right now looking at Kyrie dropping really low. Has to use the little counter, so now he really can't contest for the turtle. Boots finds ATM. Oh. ATM, even though he has the vengeance, able to run away. D7 gold lane. unable to catch Keyboy, but looking at the goal lane, looks like Donut is being harassed oh. by Sans. First blood goes over to Onyx. I mean, we talked about well it right played. before, right? Novaria has the range, has the damage, and has the mobility, right? So she's quite broken, honestly. We do understand why she was banned out in that first game. And here in the second game, man, Donut's not going to have a really good time if Sans is able to roam around like that. And it's still a different Onik. Game number one, Onik played towards CW. Game number two, Onik are playing towards CW. What that what that shows is CW is feeling it, unlike M4, right? So he can actually <laughs> carry the game. And this time on the Claude, he's actually performing really well against his counter. If Leslie falls off, he, if he's not able to survive in the laning phase, it's done. And they're doing it as well onto Chama. Chama gets kicked. Sans as well as Kyrie oh. is there. Sans secures the last hit. And now Keyboy is feeling himself. He's like, yeah, I got the show. I got a Playmaker, Donut, and D7 are there. It looks like they want to deal a little bit of this. damage onto Keyboy. Oh, uh, Donut. There. Donut has to flicker away. That's a big battle spell used. For sure, for sure. But even then, oh, wait a minute. Kyrie, he's going to get taken low just a little bit, though. Yeah, it looks like he's willing to sacrifice a little bit of HP to make sure that he secures that. Oh. Keyboy, able to run away. Kyrie, very, very low. But again, the backup from Onik is very, very fast. And it's a good start because 1.6,000, 1 1.4,000 1 goal lead for Onik. That's I such a good, that was such a good dodge, right, by Keyboy earlier. But what I really wanted to highlight right now, right, four minutes in the game, we are going to see the in game equipment in just a bit. But please highlight that Kyrie here on the Bellman, like we mentioned, is one level ahead of Tama. Mm -hmm. Also, just going for the Molten Essence, like we mentioned, there's no damage necessary for this Bellman. He can go just full utility. And on the other side, you can actually see because they have such a good utility jungler at their disposal, they can actually just give Boots the option to go for full damage. He actually already he has the hammer he's building most probably towards i don't know maybe even in this position have to see he might just want to be the assassin that dives on donut right now onyx starts the turtle d7 tries to find an angle unable he got Kyrie oh. chama secures the turtle Wait. Kyrie goes down t cat secures that kill for himself but boots on the back line make sure he gets t cat to make sure that that's a good trade but chama gets key boy a lot of fights going from the back and forth see is still clearing the lane boots you're trying to run away you're not running away from chama double kill for the jungler for burn x flash wow okay now that's not good for onyx right because what initially was what 1,000, 2,000 gold lead has shrunk to only 400. And man, I feel like Chama is just, what do you call it when he's like the anchor? Do you call it an anchor or like the wild he's card? The he's the wild card, honestly. When he performs, it's so difficult for Onik to look for anything on the board. And look at that, the entirety, the entire situation just gets flipped yeah. to the opposite end. I gotta say, honestly, for that, for that scrimmage just now, a lot of props has to be given to D7 because he stopped Kyrie, and once he's stunned up, he can't use his retribution. So the retribution fight was very early, uh, very easy for Chama. D7 taking a bit of poke damage, but Dona took more damage than D7. An accurate shot coming in from Sans. 
And I think it was just a bit too greedy from Onik, right? The reason they were able to win and get a lead early on was the fact that they were able to play around CW. Because for next Flash, the composition heavily emphasizes that turtle control. With the Yi, better mid control. And with, obviously, the Fredrin, they could just give the chance oh. over. Wait, Key Boy. Uh-oh. Looks like the kick. Good Doesn't flicker. actually connect to the right spot. Keyboy has to run away, but this heaven is gonna get Ooh. punished quite a lot. But the flicker saves him. And now this heaven looks like he does he really want to go back in. Kyrie is blocking for Keyboy. Keyboy actually canceled his recall, but so far, as long as no one gets sacrificed for the side of Onik, all is good. Oh, look at CW getting in that item as well. That's a little power spike for him. Should be able to work around it. And like you mentioned, a different gameplay for Onik. And I agree with you, right? Because when Onik were leading, they did not contest for the turtle. Instead, they went in for a gank onto Donut. There they force it out. They lose. But there's a mid power spike coming in, especially for Kyrie here. We'll see what happens. D7 jumps in, but doesn't get Kyrie. Kyrie secures oh, the turtle. Man. Look at that. D7 is going to go down. Boots secures it. ATM got kicked in the wrong place, but Tamai still in the middle. Double kill for Boots. Boots again taking the team on his back. CW tries to chase after ATM, but oh. ATM almost gets knocked i down by Sans. Again, Onik playing it just clinically in that position. Sans uh -huh. trying to look for him. <laughs> Doesn't find him, goes for a shot anyways, and does not get anyone. But I would actually say in that team fight, Keyboy, he wasn't kicking to the wrong, the, the wrong direction. He was actually utilizing that kick to zone ATM away as he has that vengeance, giving his team a bit more space to play with. And here, also, Eterna, you mentioned that DHS and Golden Staff. Now, this is a plus and a minus. If you go for the Leslie, yes, uh, you know, the, the Claude will not have to go for Winner Nature. Doesn't even need to go for Steel Leg Plates, but that does give him a bit more space to go for full damage, and then the rest of your team might suffer if you lose lane. That's why Burnt Next Flash really had to bank on Donut bullying CW. Keyboy. Uh, Keyboy gets a wow. beautiful kick onto D7. D7 goes CW. down. CW with the Blazing Wet goes after Donut. Donut what? is about oh. to go down, but he has to go back. What a dangerous situation for CW opting to make sure that he doesn't make a mistake. And Sans didn't hit the snipe onto Donut. Keyboy still wants it. No, he just wants to make sure that he doesn't recall early. Oh, he's being so aggressive. He's being They're keyboard. stopping his recalls. He's being keyboy, stopping recalls like you mentioned before. But like we mentioned, right, there is a mid-game power spike happening for Onyx. So even earlier on, if BXF put Onyx in a tough position, Onyx has that mid-game to count on, right? They have Kyrie on the Bellman. They also have CW that needs a little bit more time to get those items. But once they do, that's how Ooh. much pressure that they have in the, you know, just team fights in general. This is Novaria's debut game in MSC, in fact, in the entire Mobile Legends ecosystem. And now we can definitely see that it's very impactful here. 3,000 gold lead for Ronic. Now the, the Lord has spawned. We can definitely see it is a big priority for them to start things up. D7 charges in, but doesn't catch uh -oh. his key boy. CW, uh -oh. super low, gets taken down by Jonah. That's a good start for Burnex Flash. ATM goes in. Kyrie gets pushed back into the fight oh, by D7. And D7 secures the kill for himself. CW, again, the battle mirror image, I think, was just misplaced there. He panicked a bit, and this is Burnex Flash with a capitalization. Similarly to game number one, BXF will be able to contest for the First Lord. They have the utility for this red tree. Oh my Who's god. jumping in? Yeah, right now, Black Dragon Form. Boy. They find Donut, but Donut gets back inside turret range. Boots still secures the kill. ATM is super low. He has to go back. D7 front lining for Seacat. Oh. And look at his sons from the side. Unable to get D7. Now Chama has to run away as well. That's a good fight by Onik, but still the Lord goes to the hand of Burnix Flash. I mean, they were grasping for anything they could grasp on, right? Clearly, they weren't able to get control over the Lord. So the next best thing is they can do is try and prevent for BXF to have the most optimal push, which is how? Take away Donut. And that's exactly what they were able to achieve. However, if one of them were taken out, that could have ended a lot differently. Very risky play. Thing is, Burnix Flash. The Lord isn't what it looks like. They're, they're not using the Lord in the conventional way. They're not just using the Lord to siege down turrets. It's a bonus. What the Lord is used for here for Burnix Flash is to give Donut more space. They need oh. time, and they're doing it right now. And D7 gets caught and gets killed by Kyrie right now. It looks like what is really stopping Onik from moving forward is D7. And, and Keyboy is just like, yeah, let me get him, and you guys finish him off. D7 is role-playing as Boots in the first game. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. You gotta be careful. 
and Donut is cosplaying himself in MPLK Age <laughs> because this is exactly what Burning Slash like to do. They will lose early game. They will straight out just give everything over. Team fights, whatever. As long as Donut continues to scale at a steady pace, and right now, despite him being behind, despite him being ganked so much, He's actually, he actually completed the BOD. So he has the Berserker's Fury, Endless Battle, and BOD. The trio items that you need, but that range. That's the thing. The Novaria signal. Oh, he didn't go for Endless. He went straight for BOD, so that Power Spike is a bit delayed. He needs to get that Endless, or yeah, he's already building towards it. So there you yeah, go. But here again, Keyboy already has the Twilight Armor, so he can take a bit of damage from Donut. So I'm kind of thinking that Boots as well as Kyrie will be building towards the Twilight Armor as well. So Dona, he really has to select his targets carefully to make sure that he really impacts in the game. And you guys were talking about how D7 is cosplaying Boots. Let's talk about Boots. 4-1 and oh, he's having a very good game on this Yuzong. He is. It's a, it's, a, it's a power pick, right? It's very, very comfort for him as well, for him to use. He's used it a lot for how many seasons already. So definitely something that he didn't have to really adapt with. But another thing that I really wanted to highlight is the fact that let's say Donut gets that power. Oh, what? ATM. All right, ATM's fine, ATM's fine. Getting but, chunked quite a bit there. Yeah, but let's say Donut gets to that power spike, right? The problem is Leslie is single target, right? So even if she does get that damage, she gets the crit, she gets the true damage as well. How much of an impact can she have if CW is already full item? Oh, it's still big. It's still it's massive. Still big, yeah. Like, CW uh, on his own gets countered by the Leslie, right? So, again, CW can't just go in randomly with the Blazing Duet. They need to target Donut. And the thing is, Burn Expansion's composition is already playing around Donut. The Joy and the Fredjit, most importantly, are there Surprise. to just prolong the team fights, to give the Leslie more time, more space to poke them down slowly but surely. That true damage builds up. Just now, it hurt. It hit quite a bit. Chama, Kyrie, they're eyeing each other down in terms of level. Kyrie will hit level 15 a bit earlier compared to Chama. Oh. And now Keyboy manages to get CK, but no one is close enough. CW oh. is there, but Keyboy's gonna get taken out by ATM. And now CW and Sans, they're trying to kite away boots, boots. boots from the back line. Black Dragon oh, Force goes after Donut, and Donut gets petrified. Oh, Donut. Donut still survives, but Sans gets the kill spree, but Boots gets taken down by Seacat, and now both teams are oh, not oh. looking at the Lord, they're looking at the kills. Both teams sacrificed quite a bit just now. Yeah, two for one trade, and that was nearly not worth it for Onik, if not for the range and the targeting that Sans has, and you've got to give him a bit of props, right? Novaria's second skill isn't as easy to target. Oh no. You know, yeah. it's quite difficult, but he still manages, and once again, more aggression as both of these teams emphasis on the next board. Look at CW, ATM doing quite a lot of damage, and now Keyboy finds one. Does he want to get a kick, but no, not yet. That's Kyrie, as well as Chama, are there. Kyrie secures wow. it. Kyrie gets the Lord, but Zika with a real one manipulation. Right now, Keyboy Careful. gets pushed donut, away, donut. and Kyrie gets taken down by ZK. Donut gets a kill out to Keyboy, oh. even though Onik oh. gets oh. the Lord. CW gets away with a slither of health. Way, way too aggressive there by Onik, and Donut makes them pay for it. Remember, again, Donut is the key member on Burn X Flash in this game. That Leslie needs to scale. The fact that he got a kill earlier will give him more. And the fact that Onik got the Lord, it actually will be good for Burn X Flash because the Lord will be cleared up and that will give Donut more gold to play with. He's gonna be farming, he's gonna be able to hit that power spike. And earlier, before the Lord, when Donut got picked off, two for one. On paper, it's not worth it for Onik, but it was worth it for Onik. As long as Donut doesn't have game time, doesn't have you know the time to roam around, get gold, it should be better for Onik. Ooh, that was so close. Wow. reaction time from CW. That was oh wait a Three minute. Woman Blishin, Hughes, and right now CW is oh, gonna no get pushed away from the fight. ATM is making sure that he does not contribute, and Sans almost gets ATM. Quite an initiation. Start off by Burnix Flash, but Ani manages to get away. Oh, that was too close for comfort, right? That was beautiful. And okay, it's here. talking about in-game equipment, now I understand, right? Now I see the damage and the not just like the single target damage that makes an impact, right? But just that kiting. The kiting, the cancel, and now he's actually building towards Winter Nature. Yeah. So he has That's the trio oh, That's so bad. Big difference here. That's what we mentioned, right? The trio items is what he needs to deal damage, and after that he can go for Winter Nature, and then if the game goes even longer, second BOD. With that second BOD. It's almost a guaranteed win. Keyboy. He sees D7. Oh, he oh, wants D7. the kick. 
But D7, beautiful, managing to get himself in a position that makes it so that he can run away. Real world manipulation used by Seacat. CW, half HP, but no one from Burning Splash can actually go for it. D7 now knows that Keyboy wants him for some reason, and he's ready to counter the fact that he's going to get caught. It all relies on Keyboy, I believe, now for on it. Keyboy and Yuzong. Because it's all about finding Donut. They're like cops. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. That, 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 was, that was actually very good. I, I didn't expect that. But now, speaking of not expecting anything, this is a 60-minute game with nine kills to nine kills. And now Donut level 15. Same with Kyrie. Same with Chima. So now it's basically an even playing field when it comes to the Lord fights. And definitely look at the the, the, the roamers because D7 as well as Keyboy, if they can hit, if they can the time their, if they can hit their crowd control on the junglers, not make, making sure that they can't use the retribution, that might be the difference maker. And as you mentioned, the winner nature is going to be huge in this fight. I think at this point they don't even need to try to win that uh, for for Onik. All Keyboy needs to do is kick D7 actually. Let Kyrie 50-50 because on a Bellman is never a 50-50. And now, the Yuzong can't even dive the Donut with the Wind of Nature, so it rely really relies on Keyboy. Keyboy needs to get a good okay, kick. ATM. ATM, jumping in. ATM is looking for CW. CW is at the back, and right now they're trying to zone away oh. Boots as well as Kyrie. Oh. Keyboy finds Chama. Doesn't want to kick just yet. Right now, looking at the situation, Burning Splash. They want to force a fight. Donut, oh, Donut, you're in a very Keyboy, dangerous Keyboy. situation. Keyboy finds Donut. Donut wow. gets kicked back. Mega kill for Sans. Boots gets D7. Keyboy had to use his immortality. Double kill for Boots. Boots is really carrying on it right now. Chama and Seacat tries to run away. This is a very bad fight for Burn X Flash. And Onik wins it all. Oh my god, that was beautifully, beautifully done. And look at Sans and his oh. confidence as he's dealing that damage on to Seacat. They're gonna go for the top side aggression here into that bottom side. But it seems like Kyrie is still gonna go for the Lord here. 10 yeah. seconds under that timer. They can actually go for He's the end here. Seacat exactly. is getting zoned. Yeah, right now the minions are going in. Seacat uses the real woman oh. but it's not gonna help out Onyx Esports. Onyx in the nation starting the game with a 2-0. GG, well played. Struggling there against the home ground team, but inevitably they were able to recover, stay in their pace, and do as they're told. They understood the assignment. Cho, Keyboy, he was the key. Yu Zhang, he was just a distraction. That solo conceal play really did Donut dirty. You could really say that Cho just now was the key boy. Oh man, he was the key. He man. was the key, man. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. But, but either ways, starting off MSE, we already got a lot of crazy picks. The debut for Nobaria, we seen the Bauman, the Bane has been banned. It's yeah. just the first series of MSE, and we can already see changes after the patch. For sure, for sure. Novaria is going to definitely be just a hero that we always see banned out, right? Because that was too, a little too much. Like we mentioned in the game, you had the mobility, you had the range, and you had the damage. And this is actually a statement coming in from Onik as well, right? A lot of people have doubted them. A lot of people have said that on the international stage, they choke. But this first match against Burnex Flash, a team that has the home advantage, it sets the tone for perhaps maybe the rest of the tournament. I would say it's a statement from both of the teams, right? Burnix Flash as well. Coming into this, a lot of people completely wrote them off. Oh yeah, definitely. Home ground advantage doesn't matter, a lot of people say, but it definitely uh. did matter. They popped off when it mattered. Game number one, I honestly feel like we saw Burn X Flash outclassing on it in game number one. Agreed. It was one mistake that turned the tides around. And if Burn X Flash continues this pace of improvement, if they continue to adjust this way, I think you can actually expect them to be contenders, even in this group stage, because a lot of people, again, wrote them off. I'll play Onik. Those were the predictions for most of the talents as to who will go through to the next stage. Honestly, looking at the crowd as well, Burnix Flash walking off, everyone still cheered. They were still proud of their team, and I kind of feel like that's actually a very good motivator because, again, you're going up against Onik Indonesia where we see how, how strong they were in their own region. And the fact that Burnix Flash 
could give that big of a challenge, I kind of feel like even the audience, they're like, okay, you know what? There's a very good chance we could go all the way. Man, I'm proud of them. A burn? Yeah. I'm, I'm super proud. I'm super stoked. I'm feeling Cambodian right now. Me too. I'm feeling very Khmer. Me too. We just Jum need the flag. Jum Rip Sur, <laughs> such a day. But for the MVP, it's not going to be Cambodian. It's going to be an Indonesian player, and it's Key Boy, because he was the Key Boy. Cho. I said Kufra, he says Cho. And here, honestly, even in the itemization, I don't think there's much to talk about, because on Cho, it's all about the freestyle. It's all about oh, yeah, how definitely. you can get those cheeky and unique engages. Because Cho is not a frontline, man. Even though huh. technically when you have the items, you could frontline, but it's all about getting those CCs onto the right target. In the very final fight, I saw the position from Donut. Oh. And I'm like, Donut, you're in a very bad position. After the Novaria ult made sure that Donut was slowed, is GG. Well, let's take a look at the MVP highlights here for game number two. What was Key Boy able to do the entire game? Well, here, not a good show of the MVP for this specific <laughs> uh, highlight moment. But throughout the game, he was always up in front, zoning and understanding every, I would say, limit on the heroes. Even ATM there, when he popped the Vengeance, that's when he decides to kick ATM away. And a few times, Key Boy as well, he notices that, you know what? If a few of my teammates die, if they are overextending, I will not follow them. I am the roamer, but I need to be the one looking for these spaces. In this particular situation, he was trying his best to just help Kyrie out of that position, maybe go for Donut, but this is where it really shines. That conceal! Backdoor play! Donut didn't have a chance there. I mean, what were you supposed to do as Donut? You have a flicker, you have a win of nature, but you do not have anti-CC. Once you get kicked, once you get petrified, I think CD. it's pretty much over. On top of that, you can't escape. Yeah. Leslie's main, um, maybe, strength in a lot of these team fights is his invi her invisibility. 